guys. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Hot chips. Don't do that. Anyway, um, I made a video for you guys a few days ago that I didn't post yet. Um, it's a really, really important tip, embroidery tip, that you guys should all know relative to if you're experiencing a lot of thread breaks. I just learned it the other day. For those of you guys that follow me on Instagram, I posted this days ago, so I always tell you guys to follow me on Instagram, but that's okay. I'm gonna give it to you guys now. So I'm gonna roll the clip now with this important embroidery tip. All right, let's go. All right, so I got an embroidery tip for y'all. Something I just learned. Um, let me know if any of you guys have been through this. So you're embroidering on your embroidery machine and all the threads are working fine. All the needles are embroidering fine except for one. You know it's not your bobbin. You know it's not up here. You know it's not the thread path. Everything is lined up fine. You cannot figure out why this one specific needle is embroidering sometimes and then it's having thread breaks for no apparent reason. You're just in the bobbin tension, you're doing all of that, nothing seems to work. It embroiders a little bit, and then you get a thread break. It embroiders a little bit, and then you get a thread break. It's not doing that on any other needle. All the other needles are fine. What your problem is, is the needle is not facing all the way forward. So stop your machine, take the thread out, get another needle, put it through the eye of that needle, and make sure your machine your needle is facing exactly forward. Your needle might be slightly to the right or slightly to the left, but that eye of the needle, the little circle that you put the thread through, has to be facing exactly forward. And it makes perfect sense because when it goes down into the bobbin case, it has to meet up with that eye so it can make that loop. And if it doesn't, if it's a little bit off, it might embroider a little bit, but then eventually that thread is gonna break. So make sure your needle is facing all the way to the forward of the most forwardest. Let me demonstrate. All right, now I'm not sure if you guys can see this, if I got a good shot or not. Pardon me for my needle being dirty, uh, my machine being dirty, I embroidered every day. All right, so you're gonna get a pin or another needle and you're gonna put it in the eye of this needle right here. Then you're gonna take your tool and you're gonna loosen your needle up and then you're gonna twist it. See, now this pin is angling my needle from right to left. You want this needle facing the very most forward, not to the right, not to the left, but forward, straight forward, all right? Tighten it up when it's facing exactly forward. If it's a little bit to the right or if it's a little bit to the left, you're gonna have that issue, all right? I keep on saying that every day with these machines is a learning experience and today is no different. So uh, let me know if you guys had that problem and if this helped you guys out, all right? It was needle number one. Gotta face it forward. Fixed it, embroidering back to back to back nonstop. Use the error, let's go. All right, so I hope that tip helps some of you guys out. If it helps you out, if you think that it's, um, it's gonna be useful to you in the future, leave your comments down in the comment section below. So guys, currently I am at the All American Print Supply Company um, facility, right? So I'm in California right now. And when I got here, look, they even got a little sign for me, got some snacks on the table for me, pretty, pretty cool. So um, while I, uh, when I got here, they met me at the parking lot, got me Uber and stuff, met me after I was getting out the Uber. And I talked to Estefan, and he um, showed me around some of the new machines and this new R2 printer. You guys are going to want to see this, so uh, check out the footage. All right, Alan Wade in the house. Hello, hello. How are Welcome you? Welcome to Buena Park, California. Thank you so much. Good. Glad to be here. Oh, my bro. gosh. All right. The fun stuff for, for today, our open house is going to be in this building over here. Oh, okay. So uh, we're going to unlock it. This is where uh, people are going to enter through. The right? open house is tomorrow, right? It's a, it's tomorrow, yeah. Yeah, okay. Just okay. making sure. I heard you say today. I'm like, wait a minute. No, but... <laughs> This is where they're gonna enter. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> What's up, man? And then it's Armand, I believe. Yo, there's What's up, the guy. man? You made it. What's up, man? Ah, welcome, welcome. Glad yeah. to have you. How's the trip? 
It was uneventful, man. It was good. Ooh, good. I like this. this we is... are in the middle gadgetry. of gadgetry. Oh not 100 percent done yet, but it's, it's gonna okay. get there. This is Don't amazing. Worry. I like the gadgets. But uh, we're still in the prepping the mode right now. Color schemes. Ah. 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 That's what you've been waiting for, huh? A little bit longer. So, okay. Full dedicated white print head, full mm -hmm. dedicated CMYK in the back. We're looking at almost 30 square feet an hour. 30 square feet an hour. 27, 27, almost okay. 30, okay. almost 30. almost 30, depending on the size of the design, of Exactly. Course. And, um, S, what is different speed-wise this versus the um, old Prestige A3 Plus R that's just continued? I'm gonna say we're looking at almost double the output. We're still 13 inches wide, which is pretty decent for the head carriage to move back and forth, get the designs out. Yeah. But because there is, like I said, dedicated dual head system underneath, one eight channel just for white, one eight channel just for the CMYK, we're pumping out 27 square feet an hour when you have it connected to a roll feeder machine. Nice. I see some fancy lights going on here. I'm just, I don't know, I see some bells and whistles. What's the lights for? That's just let you know ink or something? Correct. Like so ink these levels? are gonna correspond to ink levels. If they're not flashing, they're not yelling at you, then everything is good. This is what you wanna see for your ink levels, make sure everything has enough to keep production running. Fancy. And then here, you guys will see when we get this up and running, the head's gonna create a illuminated backlit, wow. just R2, R2. Fancy. So yeah. Uh, a boss man paid a little extra to get that on there, so it, it came out pretty cool when it's in action. So try to make it sleeker, slimmer, higher performance. I like it. But I still like on it. a desktop. I like the car too, and I, I like the uh, this. And this is the um, what model is this? So this is a newer model. This is part of the M series. Right here we have the M16. So it's going to be a little more on the space conscientious side. You would be needing to attend to it, I'd say about every couple hours to make sure powder is still in the reservoir, making sure to have that continuous production. But this is the M16. I uh, missed the reservoir down here. Yes. And the sensor is down there somewhere. Correct. Okay. And there's media guide wheels we'll go over later, but that's gonna keep the powder in the area, whether you're running a 13 inch, uh, 11 inch, any size inch roll media through there. Okay. And what's the widest size media that can feed through the M16? On here, I believe can accommodate up to a 16 inch. So this guy would be compatible with the L2. We have it set up, I believe, a 13 inch mode at the moment to accommodate what we have in the R2. But this will be able to work with a number of different DTI printers. Now when you say 13 inch mode, uh, what's, how do you switch ah, so, modes? So, let's show you here. So, in the reservoir, we got this spindle. Okay. It's so super just... easy, user friendly. You're gonna kind of measure out the size of your media yeah. and then adjust these guys, these media wheels accordingly, and that'll keep the powder however size big the nice. film is. I like that, I like that. Nice. Yeah. Nice, nice. Okay, and over here, moving on to the L2. Yes. L2, and this, now, why would somebody get the bigger one the, the, versus the M16? Why would somebody get the bigger shaker? So here on this one, this is going to need less manual user attention. Because the L2 is going to pump out at a higher rate, I believe this one we're looking at about 60 to 70 square feet an hour. Yeah. You don't want to have to be tending to this as much. So because it's spinning out as much film, this powder is going to be able to, I'd say, I think three to four hours of attention. Okay. Possibly four to five. Don't quote me on that one, but wow. at least four okay. hour range because it's going to have a larger uh, reservoir for the powder here. There's more sensors at work. Yeah. Additionally, on this model, if you were looking at something like this, there's going to be less media waste. Meaning when you do your initial feed, the conveyor belt on this machine has suction and vacuum. Oh, so okay. on the conveyor portion. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th so on the M16, no, there's no suction on there? Correct. Okay. On that one, you would feed the media continuously through. That allows us to create the size mode in a smaller uh, physical footprint yeah. and at a more affordable price point. Okay. Now, uh, as far as width concerns, because some people have size restraints when coming into the door, are these the same width? This one is gonna be a little smaller, so this one will fit through a standard, regular household door. Mm -hmm. Additionally, you don't need any special electrical with this model. Okay. On this size, I have to double check on the voltage on here. The This series does, on the larger size, I know for sure is gonna need the 220 volts. This one here, the smaller one, runs off regular US 110. Okay, okay, cool, man. And this is software right here. Yes, sir. That's the back end of the software. Here. Yes. Correct. So this is a board. This is going to be more on the maintenance side when you're doing your cleanings, your nozzle checks, 
Um, you can toggle a few other different options here, like alignment, if you're setting margins for certain films, and then you're probably a little more familiar. Let's get this guy up and loaded. Yeah, with that software right yeah, there. Yeah, powered so. rip to make sure you're optimizing your film, getting your ink layers, everything proper, right resolution. And I'm sure you played around with it a little bit. There's some design element features. I wouldn't call this a design software, right. but if you're looking to knock out a color, add rasterization, place holes, uh, remove backgrounds, this does have some design elements, even if you're not a graphic artist per se, like okay. me. <laughs> cool, man. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Moving up right along. I had a, a, a customer come into the studio the other day. You know how I like to let people press transfers and stuff like that. So I had them come into the studio to press their own transfer um, while I gave her her roll of, her roll of film. So um, she had a great experience. We talked a lot. And um, if you guys want some transfers, you guys know where to go, alanawade.com. So check this out of her pressing her transfers in my studio for the very first time. Check this out. All right, guys, we have Ronique in the studio and she's ready to press her transfer onto that black shirt right there. Show us the transfer. Hold up the transfer right there so we can see it. Look at, Look at that cuteness. image, that cute little kid right there. Look at that. All right, so Ronique, the first thing you're gonna, you can go ahead and sit the transfer down. You're gonna pull out that tray right there and you're gonna place your shirt onto it. And we're gonna give it one press just to get the wrinkles and the moisture out. Just hang that collar off of that shirt, the off of that platen just a little bit. Right there, just hang it okay. off. Yep. Okay. And just make sure it's nice and flat. You already, I don't know why I'm coming over there. You already do this stuff, so you already know what you're doing. So go ahead, slide that in and press it down just once. You don't wanna um, press it all the way down, just hold it down to get the wrinkles out. Yep, just give it a couple seconds press so it's nice and flat. Okay, that's good, good enough. All right, bring that out. I don't think you even pressed that down good enough. You got a little bit of the wrinkles out, but there's still a few wrinkles in there. All right. All right, that's better. That's better. All right. You said I got the pressure up too high? No, it's hard to press down. All right. So now, what I, see, see how you got that? I just want you to hang that off just a little bit because we don't want to press on that area right there. Absolutely. Because we don't create a crease. Now, how do I know where to put it? So you're going to line it up. So gotcha. take your transfer, and normally the rule of thumb is four fingers down from the okay, collar. So now we know. All right. So now you center it up. The so image four fingers. four fingers down from the I collar. So you line that thing, right line there, that bad right boy up. Four fingers down. From Look the how big that transfer is. That's, that's a that's huge transfer just right there. Bigger than me. <laughs> All right. So when you're ready, right. yep, move it over, center it up. You know wow. how to do it. All right. You know Look how to do that. Okay. So you now the next time. step, yep, no, no, because we have this over on, on, oh, on the, already. Okay. Okay. So, and actually, if you're at home, you don't have one of these, I don't have one you, of don't, you don't need it because this sheet right here, the transfer sheet, mm -hmm. acts like that when you press it initially. Okay. Now, the second time you press it, after you peel the, trans, the, the carry sheet off, then you're going to put a Teflon sheet over top of it. But for right now, just go ahead and close it up. And go ahead and slam that down, lock that in. You got it, you got it all the way down. Oh, oh it's too. Oh, man, that is kind of. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 15 seconds. It's going to automatically open to this one. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. So, what, what type of heat press do you have at home? I have the air. The F front, the automatic one. HTV run? HTV run. Okay, the, the one with the buttons that you press on the, the side? Push, the push that button. Nice. You, push, you slide it in and it closes okay. it down. Okay, you like it? No, I love it. Okay, shout out to HTV run. Look at shout that. Shout out to them. They are absolutely amazing. And I'm using their um, Vinyl? HTV. Oh, my God. I okay. Got, like I, I, printed off, I printed off something that took 15 minutes to cut on a Cricut. Wow. And I did 33 of them, and I still had some left of oh. that. Of that one thing of uh, HTV rocks. Okay. Um, they sent you a big roll. It, <laughs> nice. It was only twenty one dollars. All right. So so take that off and sit it right here. Sit that sit that shirt right there. Take we're not. The we're, shirt? Yeah. So it can cool off a little faster. Okay. Oh okay. All right. Because this is nice and cool right here. So okay. now we're now we're gonna wait till it's all the way cool. We're okay. gonna wait till this is all the way cooled down. Because okay, right so now it's, it's still warm. Field. It's a cold pill, correct? Gotcha. So you know the terminology and everything. Yeah, You're I know, professional. Right. I just look like I don't know what I'm talking about. No, you, you, <laughs> I, I, you, don't, you don't look like that with that shirt. Did you make that shirt? Oh, I did not make this one. Okay, okay, okay. But you can. I can. Exactly. And you know exactly how to make that. 
Absolutely. So we're gonna wait a little while longer little while for this to cool off. Come on, cute baby. That's right. Let's get me. Damn, it does. Yeah, because wow, that's, that's, cause that's good, metal man. right there. That's nice and cool. Now, if I really wanted to get it cooled down, I'll put this one on top of it. And so you just a professional. That's what I'm talking about. That's gonna about. cool it down see, real I fast. Like that. See, I like stuff. I like the <laughs> cheese. I like things that go in order. This yeah, is, uh, I love this whole setup. It's just beautiful. It's Thank awesome. you, I appreciate it. No, really, I, I'm in love. I'm like, I could be here for like all day. <laughs> <laughs> so, feel it now. Oh Jesus! Is it cool? No, it's freezing. Oh, okay, <laughs> well, give me a second. Okay, Good Lord. let me put this back down here. All right. So now you're gonna take a corner and you're just gonna roll it. Ro do a little more oh, rolling. Oh, roll it like that. It's, yeah, that's all right. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yep. There we go. A little rolly effect right there. Excellent. Excellent. Mm -hmm. That's good to know because I got to go do this when I get them home. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to do a whole bunch of them too because you got Ooh, 20 something. Yes. Yeah. All right. Nice. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that transfer right there. That oh my beautiful. gosh. All right, now you're gonna put it on, you're gonna put it, yeah, that's in the trash right there. Now you're gonna put it back on the platen right there. And we're gonna get a Teflon sheet, which is, actually this already has a cover on it. So okay. you don't even need to um, put a Teflon sheet on that. You can just okay, go ahead yeah, and push. I need to put a Teflon sheet. Exactly, because okay. you have your platen, you don't ruin your platen. Are we, are we so now we're gonna, it? yeah, we're gonna lock it in one more time. You know? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I got it so hard. No, My pressure okay. up so hard. In 15 seconds, it'll lock that design nice and in. All right. Um, but at home, you could do like five more seconds at home if you want to. It doesn't have Just to be five. 15. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So now take that out and give that a feel. And then you got your final shirt right there. Look at that. Wow. Look at that. That is, oh, that's, oh, man. Ready that's like to go. sublimation. I wouldn't go that far, but it's, it's pretty good. What I'm saying is it's <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. yeah. It, is, it is good. Wow. But, you know, you know, gonna look real professional. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Y'all got to be official with that oh, one. Oh, my goodness. All right. So, guys, go on over to allenaway.com and get yourself some transfers. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You did a fantastic job. You did an even better job. Look at that. Look at you that. ready to go. <laughs> All right. Thank you. You're welcome. So for those of you who couldn't make it out to Buena Vista, California to the All American Prince Supply Co. open house, don't worry, I'll try to get as much footage of the event and festivities as, as, as I possibly can for you guys. So stay tuned for the videos coming up. Um, yeah, I'll show you guys as much as I can. So um, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next video. Like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to share. Share, okay? Um, let me know what you guys think about the new DTF printers that they got. All right, peace.